This is the Creality K1 Max. It prints really fast, really good, and it's really big. But bench size, it really doesn't take up a ton of bench space, except for this rear spool holder. I hate it. So let me show you how to install a side spool holder on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. If you've watched my channel recently, you know I'm a big fan of this, the new Ender 3 V3 SE. This is a huge upgrade to previous Ender 3s. It's got an excellent auto level system plus a strain gauge which does automatic Z offset. So you get perfect bed levels right out of the box and it's real easy to assemble and it's got some nice features including direct drive. It's $199. So it's a great starter printer. This guy is $899, so you could buy four of these and still have money left for filament. But this thing prints fast, I mean twice as fast as this. It's got a much bigger bed so you can print bigger things, and it can print temperatures up to 300 degrees C. So there are definite advantages to this over this. This is the Mark Rober compliant mechanism device. It's like a 3D printed spring. And I printed this on the Ender 3 V3 SE sliced in Creality print, and it took 132 minutes, or just over two hours, to print it on this machine. That same print in Creality print, 51 minutes on the K1. That's less than half the amount of time. So both of those were printed at a 0.2 layer height. So I tried out my Cura Extra Fast 0.2 layer height, and I got this guy down to 120 minutes, or two hours. So still more than twice the time it takes on this machine. But how does that compare to like the Bamboo Labs X1C? So I printed one on that machine, 52 minutes. So almost identical to this, in fact, one minute slower. So essentially the same print quality, identical. All of these are actually really good prints. If you don't like the Creality Slicer, there is the Orca Slicer now, which has profiles for this machine. And it's based on the Bamboo Labs interface, which is based on the Prusa Slicer, which is based on Slick 3R. So you can use that, and I printed it, and it took 70 minutes. So not quite as fast as a Creality print, but still much faster than this. So 70 minutes to print this, and print quality is identical to what I got on the X1C, and also what I got with the Creality print. So it's a lot of options, but the bottom line is this thing prints fast, it prints good, and it's big. But I want to get rid of that rear spool holder. I did some searching around and I found one that I liked by a user MDF Peoria. I may be saying that wrong, but his was designed for the K1. And then Fred Boisler, probably saying that wrong as well, he reworked it for the K1 Max. And I liked it, but there were still some things I wanted to change. So I'm going to rework it too. The spool holder is at the back and there's also a PTFE guide that's held in place by some clips. I want to see if I can incorporate that into my design. When I downloaded and printed their design, the screw holes were a little bit small, so I want to improve that. I also want to make the screws fit flush, not pop up like theirs did. I brought the design into Tinkercad. This is my favorite tool for modifying 3D prints. I'm going to modify both the holes. In fact, the one on the left, I'm going to make it more of an oval. Then I'm going to have a post with a hole through it, and that's for the PTFE tubing. So the one on the left, like I said, I made it into an oval because the holes didn't exactly line up. I wanted more of a play in there so I could adjust it. Plus, I cut the grooves deeper so the screws would fit flush when they went in the hole. And then I made this post and just ran a hole through it. And I made that 4.2 millimeters, just slightly bigger than PTFE. But I made the edges rough so it's, it's, kind of, it's not perfectly round. So it's going to grab the PTFE tubing. And that's pretty much all I did to this design. So from here, I'm just going to group this thing all together in Tinkercad and make it into one new design. Once it's grouped together, then I can export it as a single .stl file, slice it, and then we can print it. I am going to slice this in Creality Print. So all I did was get the K1 Max profile. They have a normal profile, which is 0.2 layer height. I am going to modify it slightly. I'm going to leave it at 15% that they did. But they had a brim, I changed it to a skirt, and I also changed to cubic infill, which I forgot to show. So I'll slice this, and it says it's going to take 47 minutes to print this. Well, almost 48 minutes. Not too bad. That's pretty quick. Now, I prefer a USB drive instead of the cloud, so I just export to local and use that to print it. 
And here's the results. The screws are flush. The PTFE tubing fits, so now I just need to install it. There's two screws to remove from the side. There's one here about in the middle, and there's one on the end. And then you'll need two longer screws, M3.5 by 12 and M3.5 by 16. I got these at my local Ace Hardware store, and here they are next to the original screws. The taller ones are the new ones. I retracted the filament, and then I could pull it out of the PTFE tubing, set that aside, and then I could take these clips off and remove this PTFE tubing. Now, I thought I could use this same stuff, but I'm actually going to have to use a longer piece of PTFE. Now, I could use those new longer screws in the bracket. I put the first screw in, but I didn't tighten it. Then I went back and installed the other one, tightened that one up. This is the one that has an oval hole. And then I finally tightened the last screw. Now, like I said, I needed a longer PTFE tubing, so I pulled this clip on the inside of the printer, pressed the lock, and pulled the PTFE out. And then I got a new piece, cut it longer. You can see how much longer it is. And I fed that new piece in into the lock and pushed it in until it couldn't go any further. Then I locked it in place. The longer PTFE could reach down to my bracket. I pushed it through the hole and it was holding nice and tight. So now I just need to install the spool holder. The original one came out of the back and goes right into the side. And now just hang the filament, feed the filament into the PTFE tubing, and this thing's ready to go. And that's how I put a side spool holder on my K1 Max. I'll put a link to it in the description below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or just buy a membership through Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.